This lecture is about Ethernet, understanding of Ethernet, and CSMACD. So let's start with Ethernet understanding. Uh, Ethernet is a local area technology with networks traditionally operating within a single building. Connecting devices in a close proximity, at most Ethernet devices could have only a few hundred meters of cables between them, making it impractical to connect geographically apart locations. In order for successful communication to take place between two computers on the same network, they must both understand the same protocol. As we know that a, a, pro a, a protocol refers to a set of rules that governs the communication. Ethernet follows a simple set of rules that govern its basic operation. To better understand these rules, it is important to understand the basics of Ethernet terminologies. First one is medium. Ethernet devices attached to a common medium that provides a path along which the electronic signals will travel. It's like the cabling between a network. Historically, this medium has been coagil copper cable, but today it is more commonly a twisted pair of fiber optic cable. Second one is segment. We refer to a single shared medium as Ethernet segment. Uh, then we have got node. Devices uh, that attach to the segments are uh, computers or nodes. They might be printers or anything which is uh, having uh, a connection ability. And then we have got a frame. The nodes communicate in short messages called frames. These are like packets or TCP IP networks which are variably sized chunks of information. Unlike packets, frames can be of different size. Frames are analogous to uh, sentences in human language. In English, we have uh, rules for constructing our sentences. We know that each sentence must contain a subject and a predicate. Uh, the Ethernet protocol specifies a set of rules for constructing frames. Uh, there are explicit uh, minimum and maximum lengths for the frames and a set of required pieces of information that must appear in the frame. Each frame must include, for example, both destination address and the source address, which identify the recipient and the sender of the message. The address uniquely identifies the node, just as a name identifies a particular person. No two Ethernet devices should have the same address and they would never have same addresses. Uh, Ethernet medium. Since a signal on the Ethernet medium reaches uh, every attached node, the destination address is critical to identify the intended recipient of the frame. For example, uh, when computer B transmits to printer C, computers A and D will still receive and examine the frame. However, when the a computer first receives a frame, it checks the destination address to see if the frame is intended for itself. If it is not, the station or the computer discards the frame without even examining its contents. One interesting uh, thing about Ethernet addressing is the implementation of broadcast addresses. A frame with the destination address equal to broadcast address, simply called a broadcast for short. Uh, a frame with destination address equal to broadcast address is intended for every node on the network and every node will both receive and process this type of frame. So Ethernet is a protocol used by many wide lens. It was uh, adopted as a standard by the Institute of Electric and Electronic Engineers, commonly called as IEEE. And Ethernet is uh, known as IEEE 802.3. That's the technical term attached to it. A network using Ethernet is made up of a node, a medium, and a frame. A node is any device on the LAN. A medium is a path used by the LAN devices such as Ethernet cable. And frame uh, is the data transmitted in frames, which are made up of uh, source address and destination addresses. The addresses are often the MAC addresses. Now, conflicts. 
when using ethernet it is possible for ip addresses to conflict this could show up uh, in windows uh, pop up box which usually says that windows has detected an ip address conflict i have seen it you might have seen it as well this may occur if devices on the same network have been given the same ip address without a unique ip address it is not possible to connect to a network this is most likely to occur on a local area network where dynamic ip addresses may have been used dynamic ip addresses means these devices these routers when we get attached to it they assign us an ip address by themselves without asking for our consent or anything so dynamic ip addresses are temporary uh, and may have been assigned to our devices on the network unfortunately another device is using a static ip address may already have the same ip address this can be resolved by restarting the router any dynamic ip addresses will be reassigned which could resolve the issue now apart from uh, conflicts there are collisions of frames as well ethernet supports broadcast transmission as we dis just discussed broadcast transmission is communicating where pieces of data uh, or frames are sent from sender to receiver and all receives every single frame and are used to send messages to all devices connected to the net the risk is that two messages using the same data channel could be sent at the same time leading to a collision a carrier sends multiple access with collision detection csm a c d uh, describes how the ethernet protocol regulates communications among the nodes in the event of collisions while the term may seem intimidating <laughs> if we break it apart into its component concepts uh, we will see that it describes rules very similar to those that people use in polite conversation to help illustrate the operation of ethernet we will use uh, an analogy of a dinner table conversation let's represent uh, our ethernet segment as a dinner table and let several people engage in polite conversation at the table represented as nodes so people are nodes and table itself is uh, the ethernet segment the term multiple access covers that we already discussed above uh in our lecture when one ethernet uh, computer transmits all the computers on the network hear the transmission just as when one person at the table talks every one present is able to hear the other person so now let's uh, imagine that uh, we uh, let's say you are at the table and you have something you would like to say at the same moment however uh, when you are talking uh, someone else is talking since this is a polite conversation rather than you immediately speaking up and interrupting someone else you would wait until someone else finishes talking before making your statement this is the same concept described in ethernet protocol as carrier sense cs before the node transmits it listens to the medium to determine if another uh, node is transmitting if the medium is quiet this uh, the node recognizes that this is an appropriate time to transmit the frame so collision detection occurs if there is any it occurs now a uh, carrier sense multiple access uh, uh, gives us a good start in regulating our con conversations but there is one scenario we still need to address so let's go back to our dinner table analogy and imagine that there is a, a momentary pause in the conversation when you and other one have something we uh, we would like to add let's say and uh, we both sense the carrier based on the silence so we begin speaking at approximately the same time once again in ethernet terminology a collision occurs when two persons speak at the same time 
So in our conversation, we can handle this situation gracefully. We both hear the other speak at the same time we are speaking. So we can stop to give the other person a chance to go on. Ethernet nodes also listen to medium while they transmit to ensure that they are the only nodes transmitting at that time. If the station or the node hear their own uh, transmission returning in an out of order form, as would happen if some other node had begun to transmit its own message at the same time, then they know that a collision has occurred. A single ethernet segment is sometimes called uh, uh, a collision domain because no two nodes on the segment can transmit at the same time without causing a collision. When nodes detect a collision, they cease transmission, wait a random amount of time and attempt to transmit when they again detect silence on the network. The random pause uh, and retry is an important part of the protocol. If two nodes collide when transmitting at once, then both will need to transmit again at the next appropriate chance to transmit. Both stations involved with the previous collision will have data ready to transmit. If they transmitted again at the same uh, first opportunity, they would most likely collide again and again indefinitely. Instead, the random delay makes it unlikely that any two nodes will collide more than a few times in a row. So that was uh, the CSMACD. Now, this chart shows how the data collision can be dealt with uh, using transmission uh, counters or nodes which keep track of how many times a collision detection routine has been entered. There will be a defined limit as part of the CSMA CD protocol and random time periods. Now, the limitations uh, of Ethernet. A single shared cable can serve as the basis for a complete Ethernet network, which is what we discussed uh, before in this lecture. However, there are practical limits to the size of our Ethernet network. Uh, a primary concern is the length of the shared cable. Electrical signals propagate along a cable very quickly, but they weaken as they travel. If you do remember, this is called attenuation. An electrical interface uh, interference from neighboring devices can scramble the signal as well. A network cable must be short enough that devices at opposite ends can receive each other's signals clearly and with minimal delay. This uh, uh, places a distance limitation on the maximum separation between two devices called a network diameter on the Ethernet network. Additionally, since in CSMACD only a single device can transmit at a given time, there are practical limits to the number of devices that can coexist in a single network. Attach too many devices to one shared segment and contention for the uh, medium will increase. Every device may have to wait an inordinately long time before getting a chance to transmit. So this was uh, our lecture about Ethernet and CSMA CD. To know better, it is always a good idea to go through your books, notes, and solve few assignments. And if there are any questions, please do ask them in your respective groups or underneath this video. Don't forget to uh, tell me about the efficacy of uh, these lectures. And if you feel good about these lectures, then do subscribe to this channel as well. Thank you very much. Take care. See you.